For this homework, we will use an online calculator. We can find the median in Q1 and Q3 by hand, the median very easily, but Q1 and Q3 sometimes have different calculations depending on software or methods of doing it by hand. So, let's go ahead and copy the data. Every time we copy data, we will use make tab delimited copy. It's the last option at the bottom, and it works about 90 to 95% of the time. So now that we've copied the data, we're going to go over to the link in the description below. You are going to paste your data in here. You can see the link up here, but I'll also supply the link in the description and via email to my class. We hit calculate and we get the numbers. Now let's think about this for a moment. This is the five number summary. These are the numbers between the four quarters, as in there's a quarter here, a quarter here, a quarter here, and a quarter here. Below Q2, which is the median, Q2 is the median, is 50% of the data, whereas above Q2 is 50% of the data. So we could say 25% of the data is at 47 or above, and 75% of the data is below or at 47. That's what these numbers represent. They are positions in the data. We get things from this, such as the median and IQR, which are used for skewed data. The IQR for this data set would be 10. The IQR is the interquartile range, so we have a quarter here and a quarter here. Whereas we have 50% of the data, the interquarters, and the range of that is 10, the range of the interquarters. Remember, these blue spaces between the numbers represent quarters, one quarter, two quarter, three quarter, and the fourth quarter. So with this in mind, we have all our numbers here, 37, 43, and 47. Let's go back to the assignment. The median was 43, and now we have 37 and 47. There we go. This question now has been answered, but it's important that we know these numbers would be used for skewed data. They are measures of the center or of the spread, which this is the IQR. It's Q1 and Q3, and the distance between them, the range is 10. So if it asked IQR, the answer would be 10. The IQR is an actual number, the range of the interquartiles. Going on to the next question right here, we see a very similar type of question. It now wants the mean. Now there's a lot of online calculators that would do this. I'm going to go ahead and do this in jump. So we make tab delimited copy again. At this point, use the jump tutorial videos to download jump if you do not have it. Jump will come in use a lot throughout the semester. So I will click over to jump and open up a new data table. New data table right there or control new once you're in jump or command new, depending on Mac or PC. So now that I have a data table in jump and I have my data copied, I want to do edit paste with column names. Now it's very important you do not click in the table yet. If you click in the table, it can cause problems. Also, I'm changing this up, we want to do paste there is no column name. If I paste with column names, which you should not do, you will see the number appear up there, and that's not good. So we are going to open up a new data table again, bring it right over here, full screen it, and now since there is no data label at the top, we're just going to go to paste, because there's no, there's nothing, nothing telling us what this is, there's just column one, it's data. On Macs, you'll see these spaces. Jump just ignores them. On a PC, you don't get those spaces. You could technically go in here and remove them, as I misclick. But it's no big deal to have those spaces. So don't worry about removing them. If we were to submit this data to someone, we might want to clean it. But don't clean the data. Just go to Analyze. I went up to the top to Analyze and to Distribution. Analyze Distribution. That is where I'm at right now. Click OK. We're going to stack this by clicking on the first red arrow over here. You can click stack. Makes it nice and easy to look at. So we have something that's uh, it's just messy data. That's the way I, what I would call this. We don't really have a good shape to this. There's, I don't know, there's gaps, you know, depending on what we were to see here. If we change the shape of the histogram, the bin size, um, I mean, it's just a mess. Changing the bin width down here, nothing makes this look good. So we have maybe a slightly uniform, messy distribution depending on how we shape the histogram. Nothing really easy to describe right here. 
but let's go ahead and look at the mean, 970. That is the average of all observations. If we take every one of these observations and average them together by the total, we would get 970. That looks about right. We have some low and some high and some in the middle, so 970. Going back to the homework, 970. Next, we have the median. And the median is usually calculated fine by jump, but let's go back to our little solver thing. This solver program that we have is going to help us out and make sure we get the right answers because this one it seems to do it correct all the time with in line with what the homework wants. 950. Now the median is the middle number. Not because it's the middle number right here, but if we were to line all of these numbers up, it would be the number in the middle if we put in ascending or descending order. Now think about this. If you have a data set of three numbers where you have one, two, and three. So one, two, and three. Two would be the middle number right there. Two is the median. But then if we put a number here like three million or billion or trillion or zillion, I don't think zillion is a word, two is still the middle number. It doesn't change position because we still have it here in the middle. Now, if there's multiple middle numbers where there's two right here, there's two middle numbers, two and three, as I can't highlight those, 2 and 3, it's going to average those two together to give us 2.5. That is how the median is calculated. It is either the middle number or the average of the two numbers when there is no middle number. So for odd amounts of samples, we will have a middle number, such as 1, 2, 3 has a middle number, but 1, 2, 3, 4 does not have a middle number, so this is an even amount, and you have to, you have to average together the two middles. That would occur right there. Some people ask about how we do Q1 and Q3 by hand. Well, a lot of times we would just cut the data set right there and we treat it like one and two if we blank out over here. So one and two are the only numbers we're looking at and you would find the median right here of one and two, which is 1.5. It can be calculated that way. There's other ways of doing it, but you just have to know that this is the 25th percentile in the data right here. If we divide the data sets into two data sets, this is kind of the median of the lower data set down here, and this is the median of the higher data set. It's all positions. That's what the five number summary is. So going back, let's actually get our answer to this question. It wanted the median. We have 950. And let's see if jump was being so kind to us and giving us the right results. I'm going to click down here and click on jump, and jump also gave 950. So if you are using jump, you will most likely get the right answer also. I think it's Q1 and Q3 where it sometimes differs. So be careful using Q1 and Q3 for jump. So we'll go back to the homework. The median is 950, meaning that 50% should be at or above this, and 50% should be at or below this. Q1 is where we're going to use the nice calculator for us. So let's zoom back out here. Q1 is 750 and Q3 is 1250. 750 and 1250. 25% of the data is below 750, and 75% of the data is below 1250. Here we are, 750 and 1250. The range is just the total length of the data set from min to max. So we have 600 and 1300. The whole length of that is 700. You can do max minus min. If you do 1300 minus 600, you will get 700. So the range of this data set is 700. The IQR is the range of the quarters right here. We can do Q3 minus Q1 is the formula for IQR, and that gives us 500. IQR is an actual number. Going on here to the next question, we have a stem and leaf plot. One important thing to notice right here is we have a key. This key tells us how to read it. And I've seen this a lot on the test. Who knows if we'll be on it this year. But a lot of times we might have where 7 slash 1 equals 7.1 or 7,100. In this data set, it does mean 71. So be very careful that you look at the key and identify how these numbers should be read across here. Now with this data set right here, we're actually looking at a shape of a histogram because each of these have been with 10, as in all the numbers in the 30s are contained right here in this stem three. This data goes all the way from eight to 71. 
This data is unimodal, meaning it has one most often. Unimodal. Is the Simon Leaf plot symmetric or skewed? Now remember, skew mean, skewed means which way the tail is pulled out. Left means to the low, which would be down here, and right means to the high. It's weird how this data set looks because there's no left and right, but if we were to lay it flat, you could see that the 765 would be over here to the right, and there's a little more buildup of data on that side. It kind of looks like the tail pulls out a little bit that way. You generally want to ignore outliers in this case. That 8 makes it a little confusing because that would definitely be a strong right skew, or we might have a moderate right skew. So we're going to say the data set is skewed to the right. The center of this distribution, this is a gimme question because a lot of times it just gives you wacky stuff of the 70s or the 60s. Well, it's in the 30s somewhere. The number of home runs per season range from 8 to 71. And I can't highlight, this is the end of this question, or there's one more part. What's the unusual feature? Mm, this gap or outlier right here is an unusual feature, let's say. And there we go. You know, unusual features in this class are usually gaps and outliers. We have shape, center, and spread describing a histogram. The shape is unimodal, slight skew right, the center is somewhere in the 30s, and the spread would be either the range or, generally speaking, if we say it's skewed, you need to remember that the range is the IQR. Excuse me, the spread is the IQR. So median and IQR are based on position and they're paired together, where mean and standard deviation are for normal data. They go together. Make sure to have that written down. And once again, make sure to look at the key. I can't highlight that enough. The key is so important. Going on here to the next question, we have a dot plot. And we really don't mention these that much. It's basically a histogram with just a count. Um, I mean, if you just put boxes over this, you would have the histogram just by the height and a count axis. So you really don't see us talking about dot plots that much. Um, sometimes we don't even mention them in class, but it's just another way of looking at data, and really you don't see them that much. But let's go ahead and take the data, make tab the limited copy. We're going to go back over here to jump and bring up a new data table. And we are going to this time paste again, but not with column names, because there's no column name up here. There was no name to the data set. Let's move this out a little bit. And here we are. We're going to go to Analyze. That's why I'm clicking up there that you can't see. Distribution. And we're going to double click here, and we will get a histogram. The histogram is just like the dot plot. We can even bring up a count axis. Dot plots, I said, like I said, aren't that valuable. It's better to just make a histogram with the bins, and you could just put your dots in here if you want, because you can draw a histogram over a dot plot. So we have a unimodal, slightly skewed right distribution. So let's go back here. Where do we see that? Unimodal, slightly skewed right distribution. That's it right there. If you notice, all of these distributions could be des described a certain way. Let's start describing them. A is a slightly, but not really, bimodal distribution. Eh, there's a little bit of bimodality and a skew right. B is uniform, almost perfect uniform, if there was another dot, uniform meaning one dot, one form. Here we have C, which is kind of the reflection, so it's a left skewed unimodal distribution. This is a unimodal right skew, and this is a unimodal symmetric, it's perfectly symmetric. And then right here on F, we have a bimodal slight left skew, and the modality is kind of just light, um, modality just mentions how strong the modes are. You don't really need to know that, but in class we talked about we want to see clear peaks. So is it bimodal? Mm, there's just kind of a buildup in this part. So however you want to describe it would be all right. Just good we know the terminology of unimodal, bimodal, and uniform. Here we go. It is definitely unimodal. Make sure you do not confuse unimodal and uniform. Very important. Is the distribution symmetric or skewed? Is going to have a right skew. Left is to the low and right is to the high. Which of the following best describes the center of the data? Since we are saying that it is skewed, since we are saying it is skewed, we need to use the median. So it has to be the median. And since there's actually a trick to this question, you can do it and jump. But think about this. How would you get 3.6? That sounds like the mean to me. Because the median is probably, I'm guessing, averaging together 3 and 4. 
because there's no true middle number. So if you average together 3 and 4, you get 3.5. There's no two numbers to average together up there that get you 3.6. Now let's see here. The spread of the data it looks like it goes from 2 to 6. So it goes from 2 to 6. That would make a range of 4. Describe any unusual features. Um, I don't really see anything crazy right here. We can throw this into jump and um, let's go back to jump right here. We can do a graph of, let's see here, I think if we go to overlay plot, we put it in here, so this is overlay plot. I am now looking at the time order of the data, so that was under graph overlay plot. And let's see here, there's not a whole lot of data. We have the gaps created by putting it into a Mac. Nothing really too interesting. It kind of goes up and down, but I really don't see a cycle. I think the question of this one's pretty standardized. Um, there are no unusual features, but you can put it into jump to double check. But I think no unusual features is usually the answer to that one. Not that you shouldn't know how to check the data, but if we look at time ordered data, which this chapter really doesn't cover, so it's kind of talking about a topic here that's a little bit of chapter five, time ordered data would be something we can look at on a XY graph you might be able to see something, but I think you'll be fine to put there are no unusual features. Good luck on this assignment.